All right, he's a bad boy, but not that bad. He had Shaq's back in 99, won a ring in 2000 with the Lakers. He used to battle with Kevin McHale. Now he's the king of Kale, a boss in Bitcoin, the double deuce, the very tall John Sally. What's up, John? Well, that was a great uh, intro, man. Way to go. What's up? I'm glad you like that. I'm curious, what's more complicated, uh, understanding the triangle offense or understanding how Bitcoin works? I'm going to say the triangle offense because you have to deal with four other knuckleheads. When you go and watch GodBlessBitcoin.com, which is uh, put on the platform for free so people can have financial uh, um what is it? Education is one way of putting it. The reason it was even put free, our great director, oh, husband-wife duo, Brian and Kelly, they were like, first we were going to look for all kind of distribution for our documentary. But it was like, if, if we do that, we're going to be adding to the problem and people are not going to be able to get the information. The information should be out, should be free, it should Everybody talks about the matrix, but that's exactly what Neo was explaining, that information should be free and it should be abundant to those because everybody's about to go through it. They, we've been going through it for years. So GodBlessBitcoin.com explains it, puts you on a path, makes it much easier to digest the idea of, of uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency. And if you're going to do it, you want to do it with the best coin, not the coins that everybody are making up in their, you know, in their garage. Yeah. So is Bitcoin the only one you should have in your portfolio? Because a lot of people are high on this Ethereum as well. You know, it's a it's a trip. I don't talk about any other religion except one. <laughs> but it's the one way of looking at it. I think you can do what you want in the in the blockchain world and in the and in the uh, cryptocurrency world. But the one has been strong, the one who literally can change everything, the one who has the largest and the strongest community, the one that is purchased by BlackRock, which everyone is hearing about, the one that the U.S. government coin is trying to match to, is Bitcoin. So once you get into Bitcoin, you, it was explained, it was designed to get us out of the matrix and to fight those powers that be. The film is called uh, God Bless Bitcoin. You can go to GodBlessBitcoin.com. It's free to watch the film. And John Sally, our guest here, the executive producer, and he appears in the documentary. And I saw a quote in this doc that says, Bitcoin is the tool that can beat the money printer. In layman's terms, can you explain that to our audience? Well, because there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin ever made. There's not gonna, it's not going to go to a situation where you go back to the money printer and you just start printing money that has no value to it. Um, this has a value, 21 million, that's all it's ever gonna be issued. So once you have it, you have it. It's not gonna go to a situation where you have $1,000 today. If you would have had $1,000, I say 2019, it's not worth $1,000 a day. It's worth half of that, if half of that, uh, because the way inflation is and it takes down your value. On a Bitcoin, it will never take down the value lower than what you paid. So if you paid $1,000 for the Bitcoin in five years, you'll probably have more, but you won't have less. Who was the first person to introduce you to Bitcoin? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, but I'm not saying his name because I don't want to advertise him. Just a, a dude who uh, was teaching me about it, and then he handed me a book. And it got to the point where I started realizing, hey, I want to get into this. So I was going to get into uh, starting a company that can help you purchase Bitcoin. But uh, I'm just going to say, I think I first saw it on television being uh, talked about it. And then in 2019, my guy was telling me how much money he was making buying a different coin. Um, I got involved with a company and yeah, at one time I had forty thousand dollars worth of uh, of of their coin. I think it's worth negative forty dollars now. That's why I I got away from the other coins. I'm not going to tell you the name. I call them, and I just stay with the best, and I stay with the biggest, and I stay with the the OG Bitcoin. So, uh, GodBlessBitcoin.com. You can call, check it out. You can join up with us. You can pass it on. 
We're looking for over a billion people to finally learn, which would add power so we don't have to deal with this international financial crash that's headed our way. Well, Bitcoin's been on a nice uh, bull run, so that's got to be uh, good for you. Speaking yeah. of uh, bulls that run, I know, <laughs> I know that when uh, you had your first show, I, I was doing my research, and uh, you were saying that your first television show, you had the chance to interview Michael Jordan. Some people wait their whole lives to get a sit-down with the the man, MJ, but you were able to get him like in the, in the late 80s. Do you remember that day? Yeah, well, I hang I hang out with MJ, so it's different. I've been I've been really cool with my man since 1981 when I first went to visit Georgia Tech. They played against North Carolina, and then you know the next year we played against one another. We wound up having the same agent. Part of the reason I signed with the agent because MJ was signed with him. His name David Falk. So I was you know I cheated on that one because he was friends with me, you know, way before we were. Uh, teammates having him come in and you know he got to be cool because he doesn't like talking to everybody so you know because a lot of people try to try to zing him yeah you and Ahmad Rashad seem to be the only ones that get the exclusive because <laughs> we were on we, we we understood the making of the Messiah and the NBA so we didn't want to we didn't want to damage it a lot of guys try to make their uh make their name off of somebody that big I just try to enhance the brother, and we, well, I look out for him, just like Ahmad did. Everyone else was trying to find their angle, but Ahmad was trying to make sure there was no angle. So God bless Bitcoin.com, and God bless Ahmad Rashad and Michael Jordan. For sure, and God bless John Sally, and make sure you go to GodBlessBitcoin.com and watch this uh, new film. It's free, and yeah. it's uh, available at GodBlessBitcoin.com. Uh, you actually... Uh, backed up our big man, our, our boss around here, Big Shaq, in, uh, in 2000. What was it like trying to stay in between Shaq and Kobe at that time? Well, it's so funny. There was no problems then. The problem didn't start until the third championship. Uh, it's hard, man. You, you, you know, I tell people just different personalities, different um, strong egos. It's kind of hard to stay that way. You see, you see your teammate sometimes more days than you do your spouse. So it's, it's you know, it's kind of hard to be around people in a working environment. But Shaq, you know, Shaq is my favorite, man. I, I say it all the time. Shaq is one of my favorite people. But at that time, they was young and they, they were misguided by some people around them. Uh, Shaq wound up getting, um, shaking the tree and getting rid of all the bad fruit is why he's been so successful since. But I playing against Shaq every day in practice. I had to go to the chiropractor every day too. My chiropractor and I became best friends because <laughs> yeah. after 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 you know tussling and and playing basketball against Shaquille, I would have to go and get my spine realigned all the time. I joke about that, but I'm not joking. He is he is definitely the most dominant to ever play and the most giving. Great guy. So you played with the most dominant big man, and I would say one of the most dominant little guys as well, because Isaiah at six foot and the things that he could do on the floor, he, he was pretty impressive as well, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. I tell people all the time, everyone talks about the great this and great that. Isaiah was doing greatness at six foot tall when everybody was thinking you have to be a certain way. He proved how much of a thinker, how intelligent he was at 19 years old, going into the pros and having a successful career, a gold medalist. I think two-time gold medalist, if I'm correct. I'm not sure. Uh, two-time world champion. And he's still on NBA TV giving away great commentary. I heard you say recently on your social media, which, by the way, everybody should go follow John Sally on all of his social medias because he's a fun follow. But you said an interesting stat where you said the chances of a seven-footer living past the age of 60, only 50%, and we just lost to Kembe which was very sad, but I worry about my friend Shaq, who's knocking on the door at 60. Luckily, you're 6'11", so you made it. That is an interesting statistic. It is a true statistic. And sad one. Statistic. Yeah, and the statistic is eight years old. It just happened to be blessed that eight years. I've been screaming this at the top of my lung since 1991 when I was trying to tell, especially athletes, they have to change their intake of what they consider to be um, uh, essential food and minerals and nutrients. A lot of guys are 
putting needles in their body and different things, but what are they putting in their body? So uh, when we talk about uh, my friend Dikembe, God rest his soul, um, brain cancer, uh, a stroke, uh, a heart attack, it just means that the blood is not full with the oxygen it needs. Um, I spoke of this place here in Santa Monica called Solaire, S-O-U-L-A-I-R-E. And this machine, it's an EECP machine, um, on how it could help clear old arteries, make new arteries, clear veins, get more oxygen into the blood. Uh, the blessing is Shaquille and I, I've been on this machine since 2005. Shaquille wound up buying one and putting it in his house. And, you know, he has his different um, fluctuation in weight. I know he just got his hip done, so it's kind of hard to work out and do the things you need to do. This machine helps uh, get that point. Uh, it's just when you look at it, we're taller, our limbs are longer. It's a long way from my heart down to my feet. And you want that circulation to be circular like it's supposed to be, but sometimes it gets, it becomes stagnant. So I tell people, walk, walk, walk. Sitting is not good for you. And if you're sitting more than 20 minutes like you are doing radio, you got to stand up, got to stand up, got to move those legs uh, and do what's necessary to keep you alive. That's the only thing that's really important. I tell people, you can see uh, somebody buying a house in a car clothes, jewelry, once you get sick, all of that stuff has no meaning. It has no meaning anyway, but staying well is, is the thing that's important. So I picked a plant-based vegan diet. So one, I don't have to be a part of the murder and the slaughter of sentinel beings. Uh, I don't believe we're supposed to eat animals. One of my favorite quotes was, you put a baby in a crib with a, a bunny rabbit and an apple and you tell me today that the baby tries to eat the bunny rabbit. It's going to eat the apple because it naturally is innate that that's what food is. So I stated that I'm, I'm, I'm focused on making sure not only in Bitcoin on how I can be financially stable and alive, I also make sure that I put the certain things in my body that helps me to flourish as opposed to dwindle. Well, it's good to see you doing good here at 60, uh, John. We do have a couple of quick fire questions we're going to ask you, and uh, and then we'll let you go. But I'm, I'm curious, you grew up in Brooklyn, played college in Atlanta at Tech. Uh, who was your favorite player growing up? It was, uh, like everybody, it was Dr. J, but my real favorite was Bernard King. I was, I love Bernard King. I'm, I'm a Brooklyn, New York kid, and B. King was the king if you talk to us, and then especially number 30. Uh, his number was 30 and in high school my number was 30 because I wanted to be like Bernard King. And Dr. J one time told me that Bernard King was one of the toughest guys to guard in the league so that's something oh, yeah. co coming, from, uh, coming from the doctor. Ne next question is uh, who was the best teammate for you on and off the floor? Uh, I'm going to say uh, probably Rick Mahorn, James Edwards, and Ralph Lewis. And then what about what coach taught you the most about basketball, but also life? Because you played for some great coaches. Well, all my coaches explain life. But I would say this guy growing up named Ted Gustus, still in New York teaching young guys about sports. So, but Ted Gustus, since I was 12 years old, has been my coach. I still talk to him this day. He became a vegan in 2019. He started calling me coach because I became a health coach. So I'm going to say Ted Gusses, but if you're talking about in the pros, Chuck Daly, because Chuck Daly literally talked to me as a man from day one. He, he never treated me. Well, I got treated like a rookie because I was a rookie, and rookies deserve to be treated that way because it does nothing but sharpen you. Um, but Chuck Daly, I, we, we've gone from losing in the Western Conf Eastern Conference Championship to the championship to winning two championships. So those those first four years of my NBA career were literally the way you would want things to go. If you got a great nucleus, you keep it together and you build on what you had the year before because you get better with time. 
And what music was John Sally listening to and bumping in the ride when you were playing for Coach Daly and winning those chips in 89 and 90? What were you listening to at that time? I had gotten into the music business in 1990, so my first artist I signed was Tony Rich, and he wound up winning a Grammy in 1996. It was called the Tony Rich Project. And my- Nobody knows, man. That's my jam. Nobody knows. That's right. And my first hip-hop group was called Slum Village. So the great Jay Diller was the producer. So uh, for 10 years, I've been five years ahead of myself. So I'm a hip-hop head since 1972. And are you, are you playing the drums? No, Dennis Rodman plays the drums. <laughs> <laughs> Another question I have here, finally, who who's the hardest player that you ever had to defend? Was it Shaq? No, it was Akeem Olajuwon. Yeah, Moses Malone, I would say, and then Kevin McHale, for me personally. And how many people still bring up the best damn sports show period to you? Because what a show that was. Only smart people. We did a, a at the Fanatic Festival in New York uh, last uh, two months ago. We did um, we did the best damn sports show. We brought all the, all the guys back except uh, John Crook. He had to do something with ESPN. Uh, so we're working on getting that podcast show back up. Now let's get the crew back together. Uh, Bitcoin, it can make the world a better place. God bless Bitcoin, the financial revolution. Go to GodBlessBitcoin.com and check out the new film produced by our guest here, John Sally. Thanks for your time, man, and I'm glad to hear that you're doing good. I'll, I'll send your best to the big fella. Okay, man. Thank you. Be easy, brother. All right. Peace, peace out, John.